how fashion has changed over the decades. Let's take a look together how fashion has changed over the decades and remember to forget all the rules, if you like an outfit you wear it, to be your own kind of beautiful. While technology progressed in the first decade of the 20th century, fashion largely remained the same. This period is also known as Edwardian era. It was an era of luxury with elegant dresses and expensive fabrics. Fashion was characterized by the new S-bend corset, the powder pigeon shape, high collars and hats. While high collars and hats remained popular throughout the era, the powder pigeon shape decreased over the years. Subtle changes in silhouette occurred in women's wear until the tubular shape of the 1910s was beginning to emerge by the end of the decade. Dresses were always two-piece garments in the early Edwardian era consisting of a skirt and matching bodice which were separate at the waist. Only since the middle of the Edwardian era, one-piece dresses became available. The first one-piece dresses were known as suspender bodices and jumper skirts. At the beginning of the Edwardian era, skirts were close at the hips and knees with a white flounce below the knees. Such skirts were called trumpet or tulip skirts. In the middle of the Edwardian era, circular skirts were fashionable, while in the late Edwardian era skirts became narrower. Men's wear continued to see the suit as the primary style though the tuxedo became increasingly acceptable as formal wear in the evening. Men's Edwardian fashion included suits during the day, formal tailcoats for evening, and slightly more casual attire for sporting events. The look showcased youth with slimmer suits and brighter colors compared to the oversized and bland fashion of the previous decade. Trousers were held up with elastic or leather suspenders. Belts were an option with casual attire. Children continued to be dressed like many adults and styles such as the sailor suit continued to be popular options. Fashion of these decade was unique. It retained much of the class and style of the previous era, but with a simplified flair. However, World War had an immense impact in the everyday lives of individuals and families, including on what they wore. Although the next decade, the 1920s is known more for radical changes in fashion, most of those major changes can be traced back to the beginning of this decade, with fashion trends in 1910. Fashion was characterized by fluid, soft silhouettes, big hats, and short hair. Women's fashion from 1910 to 1919 had a very distinct look. Dress length came up from the floor to above the ankle. Oftentimes, women wore a tunic over a long skirt. Skirts were widest at the hips and became narrow at the ankle. Shoes had high, curved heels. Women often wore boots during the day, and changed into a court shoe in the evenings. Women wore ankle-length coats with fur trim. Big hats with large brims became widely popular in this time. Women's swimwear was very conservative, extending down to the mid-thigh. Sometimes more conservative women wore leggings with these already modest swimsuits. Men's fashion has not seen as dramatic a change since 1910. What men wore then is very similar to what you might find in a shopping mall today, with some slight differences. Suits were widely popular in this time. Pants were worn at the ankle length and cuffed. The Norfolk jacket was popular for outdoors men. The most causal jacket was a blazer, worn for most everyday activities. Formal shirts had collars that were tall and stiff while ties were narrow.
Fashion during these years is often remembered for its glitz and glamour, though underlying this was a move toward simplicity in dress. For women, this meant shorter skirts and simple shapes, while men enjoyed casual suits. The world was still reeling from the First World War. The conflict, which ended just over a year before the new decade began, had a fundamental and irreversible effect on society, culture, and fashion. Essential to these new styles was a simplicity that had not previously been seen in women's fashion. The development of a more convenient, modern female wardrobe was a major trend of the 1920s and was achieved through the progressive simplification of dress as the decade advanced, a rejection of formality in multiple layers, in favor of comfort in a lighter, more natural effect. Evening dresses sometimes still nearly reached the ground, though many of the popular styles followed the hemline trends of day wear. While simplicity in construction was key to both day wear and evening wear, the latter benefited from ornate decoration, beadwork, sequins, and embroidery all helped create the glamorous nighttime looks of the decade. Men moved away from starched collars and formal three-piece suits during the day. Instead, they adopted soft collars and one or two button suit jackets often worn without a waistcoat as seen in the different styles. The most significant development in men's fashion occurred in two unique kinds of trousers, the Oxford bags and the plus fours. Though the origin of the style is contentious, it is generally agreed that it derived from the trousers that rowers on Oxford's crew teams pulled on over their shorts. Plus fours developed out of ordinary knickers short-legged trousers that gather around the knee and like Oxford bags were a bit baggier version of their precursor. In the 1930s, fashion saw a profound influence from films and specifically Hollywood. Men's, women's, and children's styles were based on fashion seen on screen with stars who directly influenced fashion. A return to conservatism after the Roaring Twenties also marked fashion during this period. Fashion gave way to the flapper girls. The flapper look was shockingly different than the past decades. Dresses were shorter, brighter, and flashier. Girls wore loose clothing that made movement easy. The waistline of women's clothes was dropped to the hip. Jewelry became increasingly popular. High heels were the popular shoe choice. Bras were first introduced in this time. Flappers were seen as giddy, attractive, and slightly unconventional. The short bob hairstyle was repopularized in this era. Smoking in public, closer dancing, shorter hair, and more makeup all characterized the typical woman of this decade. Men's suit jackets were shorter than the old long-tailed jackets. Trousers got wider, and the knicker, short trouser, became popular as casual menswear. You could usually tell a man's social class based on his hat. Upper-class men wore top hats, middle-class men wore fedoras, and low-class men wore standard newsboy hats. Both men and women were often seen in their uniforms during the war and, if they were not, their clothing styles were dictated by rationing and utility clothing. After the war, Christian Dior launched the new look in Paris, returning women's fashion to an overtly feminine silhouette, while men, women, and children's clothing all began to lean towards the sporty, casual American look. With the first half of this decade dominated by World War II, fashion stalled. This was a difficult time for the country. Because of the depression, women had to make do with less. The feed sack dress became popular at this time. Women realized they could take the sacks that animal feed came in and upcycle it into clothing. Different brands of feed came with differently patterned sacks. Knit, 
two-piece suits were common casual wear, the formal wear became classy, and the Hollywood glamour look became popularized. Long, elegant dresses made way for the red carpet look we still see today. Teen girls started wearing tighter fitted sweaters. The fashion of the 30s was less extreme and extravagant than the previous decade. Also minimal because of the Great Depression, men's suits were close cut to save fabric. The Depression made a conservative air in fashion, bright colors were frowned upon. After the Depression, the suits became wider cut. The shoulders were heavily padded. Young men wore suit coats with long tails and flowing pants called zoot suits. Zippers became an alternative to buttons. Hats were essential. Many men wore bowlers or snap brim fedoras. Beards were considered unacceptable. Fashion in this decade saw a clear gender divide. While men and boys' fashion moved towards a more casual day-to-day -day style, women and girls' fashion prioritized elegance, formality, and perfectly matched accessories. Couture women's wear saw a rapid change with new designers such as Cristobal Balenciaga and Hubert de Givenchy, disrupting the overtly feminine silhouette popularized by Christian Dior, while novel prints and colors marked a playfulness in fashion for both men and women. These years brought a new silhouette in women's fashion. Jackets and shirts came with shoulder pads in them. This gave a broad-shouldered look. Women made an effort to make their waist thin. Synthetic fabrics became popular due to war shortages. Nylon was used more frequently than ever before. Men's fashion reflected the tone of the country at war. Gray and neutral colors came back from the First World War era, and like women, they wore clothes made of synthetic materials. All of the fabrics previously used for clothing were pumped into making war supplies. A suit called the Zoot Suit became popular, it was made of a large jacket over loose flowing trousers and often worn most commonly in nightclubs. Wearing this suit was considered unpatriotic because it went so far against the rations given. Fashion in these years became progressively more casual across all genders and ages. Women's wear followed three broad trends, a continuation of the previous decades later like elegance, the youthful styles of Mary Quant and the space age influence, and the late 1960s hippie style. Men's wear saw an increasing amount of color and pattern, military influence, and new fashion icons in the form of rock stars. Children's wear saw less change, but also became more casual and brighter in color and pattern. In these years there was an emphasis on bringing women back home. The gender roles were reflected in women's fashion. Women stressed their femininity with soft shoulders, stiletto heels, and wrist-length heels. Working uniforms consisted of pencil skirts and hats with small veils. Women strived to create small weights with A-line skirts. Corsets made a comeback to create this look. Men's suits were less tailored than in the previous decade, however, the materials used in the suits were heavy still. The type of clothing worn was dependent upon the job they had. As in previous decades, men often wore hats. The brims got shorter in the 50s. The 50s marks a transition in men's fashion. As the decade went on, men started to wear more casual clothes. Along with the causal styles came diversity in colors and prints. Various polos and short-sleeved button-downs were worn. Long-sleeve button-downs came in more than just the usual white or gray. Seventies fashion saw bold colors and patterns take center stage. Women's fashion looked back to the 1940s by day and pumped up the glamour by night. 
Men had an array of suit types to choose from and favored colorful plaids. Children's fashion followed adult fashion with bold plaids and bright colors with the distinction between genders lessening throughout the decade. In the early years of the decade, fashion continued along the lines of the previous decade. Skirt suits and coordinating accessories were emphasized as one decade transitioned into the next. Quant's simple, colorful designs appealed to teenagers and young people who had more disposable income than any generation before. It differed from the stuffy looks of the older generation and appealed to young women who embraced the childlike styles. Both the mob movement, to which Quant contributed, and the hippie movement were part of a new model of street style in which fashion is disseminated from the streets up to the designers rather than vice versa. Perhaps the most remarkable development in these years dress was the dramatic change in menswear. For the past 150 years, Clothing for men had been tailor-made, and plain, and somber in appearance. Now, colorful new elements were introduced, such as the collarless jacket, worn with slim-fitting trousers and boots. The decade saw a wide range of popular styles, from the early prairie dresses influenced by hippie fashion, to the flashy party wear worn to disco nightclubs, to the rise of athletic wear as the decade looked towards the 1980s. The 70s was a decade that explored fashion, but also looked back. Women's fashion looked back to the 1940s by day and pumped up the glamour by night. Men had an array of suit types to choose from and favored colorful plaids. Children's fashion followed adult fashion with bold plaids and bright colors with the distinction between genders lessening throughout the decade. New synthetic fabrics meant that fashionable styles could be bought at any price point. Carrying on from the late 1970s trend for sportswear and encouraged by a fitness craze, women increasingly wore stylish gym wear in their day-to-day -day life. In the early 1980s, the romantic style typified by the prairie dresses of the 1970s continued. Princess Diana's fairy tale wedding dress by David and Elizabeth Emanuel exemplified this trend. Puffed sleeves, oversized accessories such as belts and bows, and historical references made bold statements. As the decade progressed, so-called power dressing began to dominate. This reflected a shift in women working in high-powered positions and using fashion to be taken seriously. Padded shoulders and bold accessories made up this look. Fashion for men in the 1980s largely followed the trends in women's swear. Like women, there was a craze for fitness wear, classic American workwear, preppy styles and power dressing. Many of the big names in women's fashion also began designing men's fashion in the 1980s. These included Mugler, Cum des Garçons, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and Karl Lagerfeld. In the early part of the decade, sportswear continued to be popular for men with tracksuits and sports jerseys popular looks. In the mid to late 80s, power dressing also made it into men's style with the power suit. These were pinstriped double-breasted suits with wide lapels. They were worn with wide ties and complemented women's power dressing. Hugo Boss perfected this look with patterned shirts and large overcoats to complete the style. Men wore bright-colored ties and suits were essential for white-collar workers. Fashion in these years was characterized by minimalist styles, some of which were dubbed anti-fashion. Most of the fashion trends of this decade are based around blue jeans and the t-shirt. Fluorescent or neon clothing, which became popular in the 1980s, remained popular until 1989. Sports clothing enjoyed increased popularity as casual wear among teenagers in the early 1990s. 
track suits with a loose nylon outer shell became popular, and replaced the older style of velour track suits. Continuing from the 1980s leggings remained popular up until 1996. They were usually worn with oversized sweaters and sweatshirts in the cooler months and with oversized t-shirts in the warmer months. In the late 90s, hip-hop fashion developed into a style more distinct from other sporty styles. Baggy jeans, hooded sweatshirts, football jerseys, puffy jackets, and large gold chains became staples of the hip-hop look. Women and girls fashion in the 1990s are very distinct. By then, the 80s had become a bad thing. Hairspray was 80s, too much makeup was 80s, flashy clothing was 80s. Anything 80s was considered a bad thing. Most women didn't want wild patterns and colors, they wanted simple and humble. Solid colors, preferably subdued was the way to go. As the decade progressed, fashion became more similar to what you saw throughout the 2000s. The grunge look faded away and sexy made a comeback. Tight clothing was worn again and glamour was ever slowly inching its way back into the fashion world, which was great news for fashion designers, who had grown tired trying to make flannel look good. One thing is for sure, 90s fashion certainly stands out as being a unique extension of the bright and bold colors that came into style in the mid to late 1980s men's fashion. In the early 1990s, one of the most popular elements of men's fashion was flannel. The long-sleeved flannel shirt came to age early on in the decade, and actually lasted as an important and popular piece throughout the rest of the 90s. In the mid to late 90s, the Britpop movement brought 1960s mod fashion back into the limelight, which quickly spread to American shores. As if in competition, however, 90s hip-hop fashion became mainstream in no time. Oversized baseball jackets became the norm on busy city streets, as well as baggy pants and tracksuits. In general, the mid-90s saw young men taking a rather lazy approach to fashion. The entire decade was about looking back, not forward. The early 2000s style is reminiscent of the late 90s in many ways with a lot of the styles being done, but in a more extreme version. The years began with sweet colors, glitter, denim, and also active wear. Vintage fashions from the 1950s to the 1980s were the inspiration for all new fashions from chain stores to haute couture. For dressier occasions the baby doll dress lasted most of the decade. The crop tops were shorter. The waist of skirts, shorts and pants were insanely low. Halter neck tops and bandos in tropical prints or bright and awkward colors were a popular match. A kind of office wear was still trending, but done less formal. The fashion had a very fallish vibe with a lot of knitted fabric and oversized silhouettes. The early years of the 2000s saw clothes as crop tops, vests, blazers, halter neck tops, V-shaped jumpers, low-waisted jeans and skirts. Layered tank tops in different colors were popular and should be matched with cargo pants. Popular accessories were bandanas, sunnies, and layered necklaces. Another important accessory was the belt. This went for any outfit regardless if you wore a crop top or a dress over the jeans. The latter outfit was immensely popular and related to the emerge of asymmetrical fashion with skirts and tops going flowy. Flannel shirts grew in popularity and so did the use of boots and socks. Cardigans, as we know them today, were also emerging and became a fashion staple to count on. This fashion era had a bit of a bad reputation which isn't hard to believe when we mostly remember the shell necklaces, outrageous hairstyles, 
When you think of headwear trends in the 2000s, one brand and one style comes to mind. Von Dutch Trucker Hats The late Alexander McQueen gifted the fashion world many exquisite, but the skull print scarf and the countless offspring it spawned was not one of them. The boys were spotted on multiple occasions rocking some wild looks that, despite being worn in some of the most awkward group pictures known to man, worked way better than they should have. Some elements from different decades are mixed to create something new, which in itself creates an illusion of a fashion that is going backwards, when it's indeed is moving forward. Black boots, leather jackets, denim vests, bombers, monochrome sports jerseys, waxed jeans, black varsity jackets, tapered sweatpants, drop crotch trousers, Layering shorts over leggings and occasionally floral print were all popular trends within this style as well. The model off-duty look was an easy formula for everyone to replicate an oversized tee, skinny jeans, or leather pants, and a biker jacket. From the last decade fashion trends remained popular were acid wash skinny jeans geometric or galaxy printed crew neck sweatshirts and leggings, trouser dresses, romper suits, preppy pastel colored skinny jeans, metallic dresses. One of the biggest trends of the decade is the statement sleeves. The sleeves have gone through several different phases, spanning from ham sleeves to trumpet sleeves and puffy sleeves. One of the favorite trends from the decade is the midi length. The crop tops are another major trend from the last decade. They were done both as cropped blouses, shirts, tank tops, and even sweaters and hoodies. The crop tops were for a while also popular to layer over shirts and dresses. Men's fashion at the beginning of the 20th century is reminiscent of Abraham Lincoln's style. Think of high hats long jackets down to the knee and a walking stick as an accessory. Also, the pocket watch was a popular attribute for men who could afford it. Neon colors and elaborate t-shirts were popular for much of the early 2010s, especially graphic print hoodies, novelty socks, red or blue skinny jeans, studded belts with large buckles, and Ed Hardy t-shirts embellished with rhinestones. The business casual look of the 1990s and early 2000s remained common in many parts of the Americas, with jeans, loafers, boat shoes, and sneakers being seen as acceptable to wear in the workplace. At the end of the decade brown replaced black as the most popular color for leather jackets, and common accessories included orange hoodies, black track pants, faded jeans covered in iron-on patches, black or white leather high tops, Timberland boots, navy blue wool coach jackets, graphic print tees featuring a small statement design, dark flannel sport coats, cambric jackets, or camouflage jackets layered over cardigans or alpine patterned sweaters, and white Adidas sneakers. What about 2020? This year the trend is definitely, the mask. Let's see how it is going till the end of the year and the end of the decade.